I'm Tom here, Battle Rap Resume here with the third edition of an incredibly infrequent series on the channel, Ask BRR. I did two of these in July of 2017 and then I did no more, but there were some questions and I've been meaning to get back to this. I've just sort of not been in touch so much with older projects, but yeah, so this is basically for those unaware, very simply, uh, comments are left, um, questions that you want me to answer, you know, email in. The best way is to comment though, comment below on this video and I will do another one of these uh, soon after. Tag them, ask BRR on the Twitter and stuff like that if you want to get them read out as well. But yeah, we're going to go through, um, you know, a lot of these were asked quite a while ago. A lot of them are just in responses to stuff we were talking about in past editions. So definitely check them out as well on the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Leave us a review on iTunes, please. Greatly appreciated. Patreon as well is always there. And uh, yeah, please as well, comment finally. Uh, comment below again and let me know questions you want me to get into in the next edition. But let's get into these. Okay, the first question comes from Figure Monkey 4 uh, they say, this is basically talking about something we spoke about before, about um, yeah, at the end of every Battle Rock Resume episode, you know I pretty much ask the same sort of questions. Favourite Dome Flop, favourite King of the Dark, favourite URL, favourite X League, you know, and also favourite movie and favourite non-hip-hop musical artist or band, which always keeps people off kilter. And uh, I asked for other ideas, and Figure Monkey says, additional ideas for questions for the end of your interviews. Favourite bar you've ever heard? Yeah, that would be good, actually. That would definitely be, you know, there'd be some interesting, because I think everyone has a two or three iron in their mind that they always, you know, can quote openly. Uh, favourite bar you've written, favourite word is a good question as well. Uh, person you like to battle most, ideally. Also, and Figure Monkey says this, and it's one of those things where you read it and you're like, yeah, I'm going to start doing that from now on. Don't know why I haven't been so stupid as not to. Please give the questions to the guests ahead of time so they can give cogent answers rather than having to rationalise on the spot. That is true, actually. I mean, occasionally guests, and I can't name it off the top of my head, know that I'm going to ask these questions and often people don't whatever don't listen to the end or don't know it you know it, it, it's fair enough but yeah it makes sense it would take nothing to send a few bullet points across just to give people even you know subconsciously uh, to dwell on it to the time you know not necessarily to make notes but um yeah thank you man um next question is from adamac beats um he says hypothetical you're a league owner with unlimited resources and you're creating the ultimate battle rap event the card will have five matches and can include any battlers from any league past or present they can even be retired which five dream matchups would you make also as a bonus what venue would you hold the event at and who would you get to host it finally if it's not too much to ask what would you name the event well first of all shout out adamac beats for an excellent question i have dwelt on this uh, quite a bit as i'm sure a lot of people have i often thought if i win the lottery and had unlimited funds i would throw the ultimate event similar to this i would stream it in clarity that it's never been before i would gift it you know huge behind the scenes access and you'd pay battlers well and you'd give a like five grand win bonus or something ridiculous just to you know all for charity as well um as for what i would call it I'm not sure. It would have to be a Barrett Resume tie-in. There was going to be a Barrett Resume event, I should say, in Oxford. There might still be one. It's very much in the early stage. I've got a few people to agree, but I need to be bothered to actually start doing it. So maybe one day, but it will never... <laughs> after, I think what we'll get in Oxford won't uh, won't match this. So my top five, similar to Figure Monkey, who says, you know, give the questions before time. I have dwelt on this myself a little bit. And I've came up with five that I feel are... Maybe they're not the most audacious battles you could ever have, but they're five that I really want to see, and five kind of big money clashes, and one maybe maybe a little obscure. But um, we'll start with the money clashes. you got to have Shotty versus Luna. You just have to have it. Like, you know, you have to have it at a giant event that sort of enshrines what a monumentous thing. And for that reason, it'll be in the UK, I should say, the event. Of course, I want it to the UK. Um, Fiddler's Elbow, I get it. It is the best venue that I've been to. You know, it produces the best battles. I know it's small, and it is kind of, you wouldn't have a summer madness, you know, in a birthdays in Dalston. So <laughs> perhaps it wouldn't be there. But, you know, ideal dream for me, uh, Adamac, would be this Fiddler's Elbow. So yeah, Shotty Luna, that goes down. Soul versus Hollow as well, which is, I mean, there's lots of Soul ones I could have picked. I, you know, I haven't sort of doubled up here, but Soul versus Hollow, I think for obvious reasons, you know, we need to see these two guys go at it. We really need to see them tested against each other because within their own environments, they're such experts, they're such killers. It would just be fascinating, you know, a real pen style clash. And uh, yeah, again, ridiculous for the Fiddler's Elbow, but there you go. Um, Shuffler versus Saurus and Ilmac. I think everyone wants to see this. I hope it happens soon. Um, it should have already happened, but perhaps, you know, it needs to take time to jet. I don't, you know, it could happen in the next five years. Who knows? Uh, I hope it doesn't, though. hope it goes down at this dream event. Tony D versus B-Magic. 
which, I mean, I hope the money would motivate Magic, because obviously he's not been in the most electrifying form Tony D has. Tony D, you know, I, I think for them to go toe-to-toe, just in terms of punchlines, in terms of the intelligence that will be on stage, in terms of the interactions. And finally, this is my sort of personal, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure this battle may happen in the future, hopefully. Um, maybe I've set off some minds with it. Uh, Dago Davala versus Topper. I'm an absolutely giant fan of both of these guys. You'll probably be more aware of Topper. Um, battled Saurus uh, recently. He's battled Reverse Live. And Isaac Knox, you know, I go on about Saurus Topper all the fucking time because it is one of my favorite battles. I think he's incredible in that battle. Dago, um, I had him on the show. Um, probably the most least viewed Power Up Resume episode, which sort of says it all. Proper obscure eye battle guy. One of my favorite punches of all time. Um, definitely watch him versus Collie see the first two rounds on Beast Mode. Uh, definitely take him up against Reverse Live against Jay Worth. You know, um, he's Lex. He's got some fantastic material. Like, uh, you know, Dago is is a different level for me. Truly one of my favorite writers out there. And i just like to see these two guys go head to head. I think this does work in a Fiddler's. And Chalked Out, if you're listening, uh, we definitely want this battle. But yeah, that would be my five. Let us know in the comments what would be your five, what you'd name it, etc. Where it would be. You can even have retired. Shout out for the great comment, Adam. Okay, next question comes from Linwoods Matthias. He says, thanks for answering my question. Penalties are a diff- difficult topic. I do think there does need to be something done when a battler has no-showed more than once or had less than acceptable performances. They can just let their ha- they can just let their popularity get them booked. They could just let their popularity get them booked. It must be their talents and effort, but it's a difficult one. I go back and forth, and yes, it's mainly a US battle rap thing, I think, because I think it would be taken more seriously in the US, to be honest. Yeah, um, there isn't too much kind of no-show drama in the UK scene, I'd say, off the top of my head. You know, Surfer, unfortunately, has a tendency to cancel battles. There's here and there. It's kind of smaller efforts as well here, so, you know, it doesn't quite have that Spanish say. And the question is, uh, in relation to my other one of the other podcasts that I do, Alpha Metallica, if you're a Metallica fan, check it out. I'm sure I've badgered you. I'm sure so many of you guys don't care about it and think it's lame. I understand that. But um, if you are a Metallica fan, uh, check it out. I've had lots of people I've had on the show on there as well. Um, always fun doing that every week. Um, he says, which member of Metallica would be the best battle rapper? Hmm, I think Lars, quite quite cleanly, like, you know, he's the most intelligent, he's the most verbose, he's the most interesting, intellectual, he can be quite cutting as well, and he has such snark and personality, so he's a battle rapper, uh, through and through, see, I'd probably say Lars Ulrich, I couldn't really picture any of them, James is, they're all witty, they're all clever guys, but they're not kind of, like, tricksy, and I don't think they could really command in that way, you know, but then again, Hetfield on stage is a force we reckon with. Anyway, Alpha Metallica, I'm going into it. So, next question is a long question from Blunted Alien. He says, so just not battle rap questions. Interesting. Here's a topic. Division of styles of battles. There is a divide in the type of battle rap that is viewed, I think, sometimes. Some people prefer to watch battles that are considered to be more serious, competitive, perhaps with a backstory or build-up, whereas others prefer to watch battles that are considered to be more humorous, exhibitionist, that seek to entertain a great number of people who might not be much of a rap fan. Dialect mentioned this in his battle with Ogmios. Think about going from Don't Flop Battle League to Don't Flop Entertainment. Do you think this division is apparent? Do you think it is more prevalent in the UK? I remember Tanaka Tan saying in a blog once that she thought Don't Flop was very jokey. Some people might feel that battle rap is being mutated into something that it's not. There is a feeling of a farce, a circus, or comedy night about it, which is a clear departure from two guys battling each other on the block with onlookers who have concealed weapons. There are even racial over- undertones that come with the term, that come with the idea in terms of cultural appropriation, or sort of taking something and changing it over time to the point that it ceases to exist as it once understood. So much so, so that all these battles show on TV might seem to parody the art form, undermining a niche subculture or genre. On one side, you have URL, RBE, UW, etc., street oriented, black owned, and the owner you have real, and on the other you have real talk, don't fluff, king of the dot king of the rolls etc mixture of street and non-street white owned mostly i'm not suggesting to unpack all this but i was just generally curious about the div- curious about the divide and why some people might be entrenched with their preference i personally watch more us battles than uk battles but i don't reject uk battles where i feel some people just reject certain battles at hand to me it's all just battle rap okay um unbelievable question or should i say essay love that man really really cool to read i i agree with you at the end yeah to me it's all battle up to me it's competitive writing and performance and you know it's not really anchored by any i I do watch everything like you know all of those leagues you mentioned i'm a huge fan of it's just for me it's it's wordplay you know is the core ingredient and and obviously you know characterization and impact and originality and you know schemes and you know everything about that so yeah there is of course a divide but there's loads and loads of divides you can go into i guess 
kind of jokey and serious in Street is kind of the you know the middle point but there's so many offshoots in that that you can look in terms of tone and where they take battling and you know it's just one element of it I don't think it's necessarily polar opposites but yeah there can definitely be a sort of jokiness about Don't Flop but I kind of enjoy that you do kind of get used to what you come from but I always felt that I was but then again URL battles can be quite fun as well I mean you know obviously let us know in the comments what you think about this divide but apparently I asked how I ended the questions in Ask BRR before and he says you end them fine the future of battle rap continues um looks shaky to me Don't Flop should drop all the checkpoint four battles at least what else is there besides gift for the gab ukbl kotr it was, it's interesting actually because this comments i think four months ago so it was really before any code red chalked out premier battle sort of announcement but um yeah no i get what you're saying there was sort of a barren period to a certain extent there but you know kotr is still holding it down of course dub scandal everyone rap is full uh let us not forget but you know, going forward, these huge leagues are getting involved, and there's a question coming up about those, so I'll touch on those more at the end. Finally says, I think URL Battle Rap resumes would do well. Um, yeah, I agree. I've got some good episodes coming up, actually. Um, well, I've got RBE's um, ARP on for an awesome episode. We spoke for an hour um, basically covering the entire history of the league, you know, his affiliations with, you know, just Battle Rap in general. Awesome guy. Uh, really, just if you've seen any of his blogs, you know, he, he can speak with real passion and knowledge, and I love that episode. Also, Bill Collector on as well which was equally brilliant. So, yeah, we've got some cool stuff coming up, hopefully getting Danny Myers on the show perhaps soon as well. And, yeah, I've got quite a few people booked in at the moment, so I'm not kind of looking to record any ASAP. Next question is from Derider Mark. Uh, it says, anything you want to ask, not just Battle Rap, this could get chili-flavoured. Thanks for answering, answering my question about future UK Battle Rap. I didn't expect such an in-depth answer. I don't know what to say about UK Battle Rap. I feel that Don't Flop needs to be around for UKBR to thrive. Other leagues have got too long to go. The whole Checkpoint 4 I felt was a bit of a fiasco in terms of not being talked about before the event by vloggers and Battle Rap Media. Well, I spoke about it at length, but I know it's just BRR. I know it's not champion if that existed then. But you know what I mean? I know it didn't get the big coverage it deserves because there isn't the coverage there really, I think, for UK leagues beyond myself and... Yeah, does not you know doesn't seem to get any shine. It's it's awful. Um, top five battles has to include at least two Tony D battles. That should be like a law or something. Talk about penalties as well. And um, anyway, to get to the question, says what do you think of hype men in battle rap? The shirt tugging, the overreacting. Does it add to the excitement? Are they helping to intensify the atmosphere? If so, is that good to your liking? Is it bad not to your liking? Or are hype men annoying to you? And maybe to people in general? Are they interrupting the battle too much? Possibly making them forget or repeat lines? Slowing down the battle? Do they influence drunk crowds? If so, negatively. Or positively hype men um i don't mind it on camera i think if it's tastefully done i think if the ad libs are there you know i remember being at a fiddler's elbow event where i sort of said before everyone needs to stop being a comedian on cam i can't remember what battle it was for i think it's when i battled 142 on that event um that classic and uh i think he said the only people that can speak is like soul jitsu or something and soul jitsu was gifted okay it's not a hype man per se but it's kind of a crowd interruption Sometimes it can really push you in, in, in favour of the battle. I'm thinking explicitly of Bangs, uh, you know, in Dago Diwali versus Kali C. There I go again with my Dago references. He comes into the second round, perches on his shoulder, like like he's, he's beside him, pushes him throughout all his bars, you know, reacts intensely. But he's got this gifted way of listening. I can't quite explain it. He understands how bars work. And he seems to quiet down knowing Dago's... Maybe he knows his bars, I don't know. But the way he was going for these long, long punches, Dago, and then kind of resting. And uh, yeah, you're going to have to see it. I'm gonna, I might put a clip in here just to give you an example of his interruptions. Oh, it all up in your face, oh, Adam. What you going to say, man? Dirty. The reach longer than the green monster from Space Jam. Oh! And that's a reach. The tall one from Space Jam was low. And you, just a random fruit on every level. And I'm Crash Bandicoot. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. Oh, the Connect Bin Stable. Oh. Oh. got twice the game, boy. That's a link cable. Oh, oh my god! god. But it can affect footage. And I've had direct first hand experience of going to see one of the one of the best battles I've ever seen live, which was JB versus Dank Schrader at the inaugural Rappin' It Jack. Awesome event that was. Um, great weather. Uh, so many people there. Uh, the, I think it was... I remember speaking to Shakespeare, I think I said, uh, this on another episode where we did... He sort of recognised my voice or something and he told me that the podcast volume was too low, but he listened to it at the gym or something on the train or he couldn't listen to it on the train. I don't know, something like that. So it was kind of a delirious thing for me for people to actually be recognised in the show and the battles were incredible, especially JB versus Dank. The Saurus recognised JB versus Dank, which is just... I, absolute delight, you know, I think both of their first rounds, and maybe JV's third as well, are just some of the best stuff I've ever seen live, you know the crowd was rowdy, you know, the crowd is a KOTR backing crowd, shout out those guys obviously got so much love for 
all of the KOTR crew, but, you know, <laughs> despite Mickey's protest, but, um, you know, they were pushing Dank like hell, and he was getting interrupted. He's a very calm guy, and he wasn't necessarily detracting from his performance at all, but there was an awareness watching this live that, oh, this might, you know, this might unfairly balance the battle. This might lead to some agitation, some spite from the commenters, you know, towards the interruptions, because he was getting pulled, he was getting grabbed, and it came from a long lineage of that, you know. I'm thinking especially of Spit That Heat, you know, he would really grab um, Craig Lamar's collar, you know, and rise it high as Trez as well. It it's just kind of quite quite startling to see that initially, um, but it's kind of been going forward since you know the beginning of time. Really patting someone on the back, it's just a logical mutation of that, and um, it doesn't annoy me really uh, to answer your question. Um, I like it for the most part, but seeing the comments on Dank versus JB eventually come out, and they were all talking about how gas Dank was, which he. I mean, he was a gap, but like, it wasn't, you know, his material that was. It was just maybe a bit of an over-interaction there. Uh, Blazing50 says, Never thought I'd hear someone say bake Tatey in a battle, which is true, actually. Um, Ain't your day if I'm snapping, still one of my favourite bars. The delivery on that, out of this world. Um, but yeah, the top comment basically saying that Dank's hype men need to lay off the red cordial and have some time out, which I mean, <laughs> is a uh, is a very, very, very nice way of saying The man Ben as well says Dank was great, but he's been a bit overhyped, which, you know, I don't know, but yeah unbelievable unbelievable battle so in terms of them i don't mind them it doesn't seem to be that prevalent yet i think bracy gets some hate sometimes in the comments and i don't know i feel like every league needs a hype man for some reason it just adds a certain annoyance that everyone loves to despise ryan crouch comments next a few suggestions i'd like to see for episodes top five rounds of tony d that's a good suggestion actually i would like to do that um me and death are going to be doing top 10 rounds of sora soon um, so definitely check out that episode. That should be cool. Um, top five or ten on beat battles with press one. Oh, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, I would press come on to do a co-host like that. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to him. But that's a really good idea for an episode. Uh, thank you, Ron. I'll definitely do that. Uh, more battle tapes. Yeah, I haven't done as many so far. So we did what did we do? We did Kruger's uh, Lazy EP and C Majors Ten Thousand Hours with Dave. Shout out Dave, obviously an icon. Um, and episode three, Michael Orleans and myself did Ogmios' Last Picnic. So, yeah, what, what else do you want us to do? Um, let us know what sort of battle of music you want us to review in the comments, uh, you know, and we'll do that. Uh, recaps on old events, um, such as Sunburn 2, Fifth Birthday, Checkpoint 2, Verdict to the Test 10. Yeah, um, just recorded a two-parter um, with Kieran Keller, the famed fan. Uh, awesome guy. Love that episode. On Fourth Birthday, we did every single battle, both days, two episodes. Definitely check that out. And maybe another title contenders episode. Yeah, that was a great episode with Kraft. I mean, it's a bit more difficult now because it's so disseminated. It's hard to predict where, you know, Shox is the title holder of Don't Flop, but what is Don't Flop? This grime clash YouTube studio thing? Like, you know, it's kind of confusing to a certain extent. So if there's like a Code Red chalked out champ, whatever, we can sort of, you know, can move forward with that. Obviously, KOTR, uh, Lazy is the newly crowned champ. But um, yeah, shout out Ryan. There was some great suggestions for episodes. Um, next comments from Igor Wig. He says, shit, mate, I didn't realise the Callum episode had been taken down. Such a shame. That was a great episode. Anyway, really appreciate the amount of work you're putting in these days. Much respect. Thank you, man. Yeah, the episode was taken down, unfortunately. But it was a great episode. And, you know, anyone that's listened to it can kind of reminisce on there. But, yeah. Um, shout out Callum, though, as well. The success of him and Uniland and, you know, all the guys uh, over at Uniland is incredible to see. But, yeah, thank you, man. Um, Doc Evol says, do you think there's any racism in Battle Rap? BCHQ did a video on it. He mentioned that the white battler Joe on URL was looked at someone who couldn't be taken seriously. Also, he mentioned that some people made negative comments about the skinny white guy in his sweaters, who was always on the URL stage. There is a, there is a suggestion that white guys don't get bigger matchups, like Real Deal has been waiting for a big play on URL, but arguably hasn't received it. Um, I mean, just to answer those accusations directly, in terms of Joe... Obviously had the Joe on the show recently. I love that episode. Homes of the God Battle sort of contradicts that because, you know, he was taken really seriously um, on that. And the praise was, you know, over the top, rightly so. Um, franchise Battle was also very good. I was speaking to him on the show and he's got a big battle coming up as well. Uh, I don't want to give it away. But, yeah, really big battle soon. I think it's like another Born Legacy or, or one of those sort of cards. Um, real deal. I mean, you know, he's battled Averb and he's, he's battled some fairly big names on there. And, you know, he's had some good lucks. And, you know, Reaper Rail Battle recently as well. It was an awesome showing for him. Um, it talks about the Shocks the Rebel total defense as well. Should that be talked about? Um, Dope Flop really killed off the checkpoint. Next question is from Johnny Guns. 
Johnny Gunn says, would definitely be good to see some URL battlers interviews, which, yep, we've said we're going to do those. Uh, I thought it'd be niche. I don't see many people speaking on anything other than URL. Aspat Resume says, do you think some small leagues are taking a long time to grow? I kind of feel like some smaller leagues should have gotten a lot more subs by now, such as RBE, Queen of the Ring especially. Also, should Battle Rap genuinely have grown more than this? It's been around for a long time to a lesser degree with cats like Cool Mo and those folks, and now we have it on TV in various forms, but YouTube still seems very niche. It seems mad popular in the Philippines. Um, so yeah, I mean, first of all about the, the league growing, it is weird, isn't it? It's odd that there isn't this traffic between the huge leagues like Don't Flop, etc. Like, how does... How does Don't Flop have so many subscribers and King of the Rolls so little? Do people really despise King of the Rolls to that extent? Or do people really, like, because clearly they don't. And clearly they don't dislike RBE. RBE gets a decent amount of views compared to it. And, you know, I can't really speak on Queen of the Ring, I don't know especially. But I agree, there's a lot of leagues out there, especially in America, that you can't really fathom how they've got such a small following. But Battle Rap in general, as you say, uh, Johnny, is kind of a small thing. And these kind of huge spark outs are anomalies uh, to the wide extent. Um... Best use of props, which is, I think, an episode I must have mentioned in the previous one. He says, sounds interesting. He remembers one dude was boiling an egg or something. I don't... Someone was boiling an egg in a battle. Okay, so comment below <laughs> what battle that was. I need to check that out. First name, last name says, hi, it's Mike here. Thanks for reading out my email. If you ever did an episode reading YouTube comments, please feel free to read this comment out. <laughs> Big up, still enjoying listening a lot. Thank you so much, Mike. Next question is from Tanya Canada. What do you think about ring card girls in battle rap? Some leagues do them, but I think most don't. Does it lend itself to the gladiatorial atmosphere appealing to baser instincts like in MMA and boxing and so forth? It seems to make sense in physical combat, getting the contenders in their beast mode. Or does it seem weird or... Or does it seem weird for a non-physical competition? Or is it just a chance for a battler to take a final sip of water or look at their phone for their bars before getting into their round? Side note, I remember Gattis, as a lesbian, enjoyed it when she battled Miss Hustle. Um, I hate the ring card girls, to be honest with you. I think they're creepy and lame. And I think altogether, they're just a little bit, yeah, I don't really like them. I mean, they've given us sort of good moments, a la Clips and Sirius Jones, etc. But yeah, they're sort of an antiquated thing, you know, a very American thing. And... I, you know, whatever. It, it gets a reaction. You see the battlers in a sort of different mode for a moment. But, uh, yeah, they're not my sort of thing, Tanya, to be honest. Didn't know about that Gattas thing. Um, that's interesting. And um, she also she says, talks about bringing lesser battlers on the show. Would certainly bring an awareness to them. Um, talk about UK battle rap suffering a blow. This is four months ago, but still, you know, the, the pain is still fresh. Uh, Danny Myers would be a good guest, she says, which is true. Uh, Gattas, 40 bars. Yeah, I, I'd love to get some more female battle rappers on here. I've been, you know, a bit lax with that, to be honest with you. But Sony Official as well, Jazz would be crazy. Like, I'm not the most knowledgeable guy on them, but I had Shonda on recently. Um, you know, need to get decal, meant to have decal on ages ago. We just need to record that. So, yeah, and also talks about the penalties as well. And, yeah, that about wraps it up. So, please comment below. Uh, hashtag AskBRR on the Twitter as well, Ask Battle Rap Resume. Um, you know, I'll, I'll return. We'll do an episode soon, I promise. Ask me some questions about the show, about episodes, about Battle Rap, etc. What do you think? You know, I've read out some awesome comments, some brilliant writing. Um, so, please, you know, write the long comments. Let me know. Ask the big questions. It's great to hear from you. Um, get in touch with me as well if you want a bit more long-form correspondence. Battle Rap Resume at gmail.com if you want to come on the show. Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Battle Resume is the best way uh, if you want to support the show, if you want to give back. Um, there's lots and lots of episodes on there, you know, at any one time. So donate, go on the page, check out, uh, help support. we got hats as well. We are selling merchandise. Are we doing BRR beanie hats at the moment? Caps and stuff are coming soon, but the hats are just there at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of hat cat rhyming, but um, there's a tier on the Patreon. And if you want to just buy one and get it delivered to you, there's a link in the description on the Big Cartel shop. Um, there should be enough there. Uh, I don't know how quickly they're going to sell out, but uh, hopefully quite quickly. But um, yeah, check them out. Thank you so much for everyone supporting the show, listening to the show, caring enough to comment in and, you know, sticking with the show. Not You know, I don't know what I mean by that, but subscribing, uh, leaving reviews. Uh, thank you to everyone who supports on the Patreon. Thank you to everyone who listens, everyone who downloads from around the world. Thank you guys so much. Um, this is Tom. This is Ask Battle Resume. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.